contribution I will be during my contribution I'll be referring to the agriculture sector. The speaker said um, before that um, the session prior to the morning's tea, I thought we have a stray animal in the parliament. Um, and <laughs> on topping it up, top, topping it up, I received an email from uh, Honorable Gerenger and Tabua about stray animal. I thought, hey, she's also thinking there's a stray animal here. <laughs> Mrs. Speaker say, the process of setting aside money by different DMUs, decision-making units, in the entire spectrum of the economy, whether it's households, businesses, schools, farmers, government, for the purpose of growth, promoting growth and development, is investment. Mr. Speaker said also, when someone sets aside money to improve the productive capacity of the existing assets, for example, a farmer buying an additional implement for the tractor, that's investment. Mr. Speaker, say, you may have read some of the recent uh, 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 addresses I've made to various communities around PG. One of the aspects I have been touching is savings and investment critical for growth and development. What I've noted, Mr. Speaker, say, that in the rural maritime area, farmers tend not to save. And it's a very worrying issue because, one, it contributes to the vulnerability of that particular farming household. If any shock happens, whether it's external shocks I'm referring to mostly, cyclones or natural disasters or COVID-19 pandemic for that matter, the first call is their own saving. And when they don't have savings, then the household becomes very vulnerable. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, so I've been talking about that is because the first call for investment is the farmers or households' own savings. And everyone in this house understands that for growth and development of a household, a farmer, a business person, and a country, it requires investment. Investment in critical productive assets. Investment to improve the productive capacity of those assets. Mr. Speaker, say for a country, international benchmark is that you need to have about 20 to 25 percent of GDP as investment. I thought Honorable Biman Prasad would make, make that particular contribution instead of going all over the place. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, say, where are we now in relation to the actual benchmark? of 20 to 25 percent of GDP, investment ratio of 20 to 25 percent of GDP. We are around 16 percent. We are around 16 percent. Of that 16 percent, the good thing is that 13 percent, the 2020 figure, the good thing is that 13 percent of that is private sector driven, and about 3 percent is government. We want growth to be led by private sector. But in difficult times, as Minister of Economy alluded to earlier on this week or during the budget, many budget sessions, in difficult times, it is the role of government to lead investment, role of government to ensure that there's enough money floating in the economy for people to pick up and invest. On that contribution, Mr. Speaker, say, I must say that there are various pools of money all over, locally, also outside, outside Fiji. Pools of money by individual households, people, former Fiji residents, Australians, New Zealanders, etc. What they do is they look around for where is the best return, easier to do business, easier to get the money back so that they can get the pool of money and invest in the country. Normal rule in economic is, Mr. Speaker, say that investable funds will find its way to the place where there is highest return and it's easier to do business and easier to get that money and own that money. Mr. Speaker say, on this note, if you look at the investment bill, it talks about, one, investment promotion. Very critical, Mr. Speaker say, how do we attract 
local investors who have got that pool of money in the bank, sitting in the bank, or external investors who have got this pool of money looking around whether I should invest in Australia, New Zealand, America, or Fiji, or Samoa, Tonga. Investment facilitation is how do I get to make that investment in Fiji? Export promotion to facilitate promote and development of export. Aftercare to provide investors with assistance to overcome any challenges post post business, Mr. Speaker said. Policy advocacy to collect information and raise awareness on challenges faced by potential investors. Image building to promote Fiji as a desirable investment destination, Mr. Speaker said. On this last one, Mr. Speaker said, if Honorable Biman Prasad stands up and starts running down country, then who would want to come and invest in this country, Mr. Speaker said? <laughs> Honorable, Honorable Minister of Economy, exactly. <laughs> Mr. Speaker said, Honorable Minister of Economy exactly said this is unpatriotic for Mr. Biman Prasad to say those kinds of things publicly, Mr. Speaker said. Of course, Mr. Speaker said, Mr. Speaker said, if you have a dispute, dispute at your home, you settle it there, Mr. Speaker said. You don't go around public, you know, washing your own domestic own linens, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, this is a difficult time when we need to promote attract investment, promote economic growth, Mr. Speaker said. We had 16.3% of GDP, our investment to GDP ratio. We need to get to at least 25%, Mr. Speaker said. That's the international benchmark for developing countries, Mr. Speaker said. It was all over the place, but it didn't talk about the critical nuances of getting our investment rate from 16.3% to 20, 25% investment to GDP ratio. Mr. Speaker, I say I support the motion on the floor. Thank you. Naka. I thank the Honorable Minister for his contribution to the debate. I now give the floor to the Honorable Ratu Philippe Tuisawao. You have the